Welcome to an intimate conversation with Barbara Eden. <laughs> From behind the scenes happenings on I Dream of Jeannie. I also know that Larry could be difficult sometimes on set. To working alongside Elvis Presley. Priscilla, I knew about you before anyone else. And although her life looked perfect, there were dark times. It was the most horrible feeling I have ever had in my life. Tonight, no topics are off limits. JFK slipped you his number once. Playboy at one point offered you a million dollars. Explain yourself kissing Elton John. She relives her truly iconic career. It was one of the happiest times in my life. Her story shock us. He'd come out to the door in his underpants. And surprise us. I'm a Swifty. <laughs> On the red carpet icon celebrates Barbara Eden. I thought, Barbara, we should start with the genie days before we move on. And let's just begin with Larry Hagman. So I know that you loved your chemistry together, and that was no secret that you had great chemistry. Yeah. I also know that Larry could be difficult sometimes on set, and I also know that if you wanted to, he could have gone bye-bye, right? Well, yeah. Yeah, he could have. He could have, but it was it was just wonderful working with him, and I, I couldn't bear to see him leave. I mean, I he was never a problem for me. You see, <laughs> if they'd asked the crew, now there would have been a different story probably. <laughs> but it was a it was a great time. I worked very hard, and also I had my baby on the show. They allowed me to be pregnant, hmm. and they hid it with lots and lots of chiffon. <laughs> I looked like a walking tent, you know. But it was a wonderful time. A there, wonderful. There is a signature move that you did on I Dream of Jeannie with your arms folded and the blink. And I want you to tell me how long it took to master that particular <laughs> movement. Well, now our first director was Jean Nelson, who was also a dancer and mm -hmm. a choreographer and, you know, so that was his idea to do that, and it didn't take any time at all. Really? No, you just do this, and you blink. <laughs> the thing, did anything happen? I don't think so. <laughs> it just seemed like maybe you went with other moves before you came up with that one. Uh, no. No? No. Uh, I know you say actress first, but you have spent an enormous amount of time on a stage singing. Swim or fly, only please. And you were in Vegas, and you were in Reno, and you were in Atlantic City, and you had a show, and you were headlining. There must have been great joy in doing something like that for live audiences. Well, it, it was. It was. But, but I, I was a singer to begin with. Right. But no one knew I could sing or that I studied. I, I studied at the conservatory in San Francisco, and then I sang... In high school, I was singing with dance bands around the Bay Area. And I came down to L.A. Of course, I was studying theater, too, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time. The problem for me with Hollywood was that I came down and didn't know anyone. I, I didn't have any relatives in the business. I had no connections, no friends. And uh, I did have a, a friend. I stayed with my aunt and uncle in San Marino when I first got here. Didn't know how to drive a car. That's and then finding a job. The first job I got was with, in a bank, downtown L.A., at night. <laughs> I got it at night so that I could go out on interviews. Mm -hmm. It looks like there was a time in your career where you were basically on TV almost every week. People kept hiring you for one show after another, after another, after another, for all different kinds of roles, westerns and sitcoms and dramas. It was fun. What was it that... But did you have to say no a lot at that point? I never said no. <laughs> no. No, I, I like to work. I like to work. And it is, you know, it's, it's, it's fun playing Loco or Stella and Harper Valley PTA. Oh, let's face it. This here is just a little Peyton place and you're all a bunch of Harper Valley hypocrites. It's fun doing those characters, but it's also fun being on The Andy Griffith Show and 
playing the manicurist. Some of the married women here in Mayberry are afraid that you're going to steal their husbands away from them. Oh, well, that's silly. I'd never do a thing like that. Oh, I know. I know you wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. Or I Love Lucy. Or I Love Lucy. That was one of their last shows. My mother told me to pick you. <laughs> she was lovely to me. She, she was just the best, the best in the whole world to work with. You were so popular on television that when you would go out in public, you really did wear a red wig? Oh, no. Only when I was with my son. Oh. Because he didn't want to be Jeannie's kid, quote, unquote. <laughs> and one time we were at Disneyland, and uh, we were in line to go on one of the rides. And the man at the, at the head came, and I had the red wig on. And the guy came down and said, Barbara, we didn't know you were here. You don't have to stand in line. Come to the front. So we did go to the front. And I looked at Matthew and I said, you see, it's not so hard being Jeannie's kid. <laughs> oh, gosh. I want to talk about some of the attention you got from men over the years. And I remember in your autobiography, you mentioned that JFK slipped you his number once. Yeah. I was doing a show called How to Marry a Millionaire, which is based on the movie. He's even more loco than I am. <laughs> and I played loco, the Marilyn Monroe part, in this TV show. And they sent us on tour. That's when they would send the actors all over to all the big cities and uh, to let people know what they were doing. We were in the airport. And I was where you usually find me, in front of the candy counter. <laughs> and I'm looking, deciding which one I want. And this man came over and he said, uh, who are you with? Like that, just very abruptly. And I said, of a 20th Century Fox? He said, no, 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 no. Who's, who's your handler? You've got somebody here. And I pointed, you know, and, and uh, so he went over. And then the gentleman who was with us for the trip, said, Barbara, would you like to meet Senator Kennedy? I said, fine, that would be lovely. You know, <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> so we went to a little room at the side, and uh, the, the very abrupt man <laughs> said, I want you to meet the next president of the United States. And I went, how do you do? And uh, we had a nice little talk. He was just a lovely guy, very nice and, and handsome. Uh, but at the time, of course, I was dating Michael and Sarah, who I later married. And uh, once we were on the plane taking my coat off, I'd put my hand in my pocket and <laughs> there was the number. Yes. <laughs> so you make a movie with Elvis called Flame and Star. Elvis also was a little bit enamored by you. Well, not really mm. me. He was a huge fan of my husband. We talked a lot. He was, a, he was such a lovely, sweet gentleman. You know, when I'd come on the set, he'd get me a chair. Actors don't do that. And he told me about this girl that he really liked a lot. And he said, how do you do it, Barbara? How do you and Mike do it in the business and keep a, a marriage alive? And I said, well, you know, Elvis, for us, it's our job. This is our job. But he did say that. And he said, I, I, I'd like to bring her to the States, but I don't know about it, you know? So when I, I met Priscilla, I said, Priscilla? I knew about you before anyone else knew about you. <laughs> and she said, you did? I said, yeah, he really loved you. Wow. Yeah. Okay, here's the story. I've stopped singing Frosty the Snowman because of you. <laughs> Me? Isn't that one Burl Ives thing? <laughs> oh, oh my. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh yeah, that was uh, Universal Studios, the movie I did with uh, Tony Randall. This is the brass bottle, yeah. as a matter of fact. I would go home at night, and I would try to avoid his dressing room, Burl's, because he'd come out to the door in his underpants, and it wasn't a pretty sight. 
And then he'd say, come here, little girl, like that, and he meant it. <laughs> it was just like, oh, okay. And you escaped his clutches. Yeah, well. Oh, I mean, I, we hear those It wasn't too hard. Stories. He wasn't dressed. So, you know. He couldn't go very far. <laughs> Coming up. I'm going to show you some photos now. We had some fun searching the internet. But first. I also want to discuss your brief career as a news reporter. Barbara on the news beat? Oh, yeah, it happened. Uh, I also want to discuss your brief career as a news reporter for Eyewitness News. <laughs> Eyewitness News. Here in Los Angeles. Once upon a time, there was a fire in your neighborhood. I knew oh, you lived there. Oh, I called oh, you. Yes, yes. You're, you're, you're on television with our anchors. The whole newsroom oh, is stunned God. that Jeannie is on TV. I can see a lot of smoke. Oh, my. I was, <laughs> I was doing some laundry when you called. <laughs> the phone rang, and I went back into the kitchen, and, and it was George. <laughs> And you said, how are you doing up there with the fire? And I said, what fire? <laughs> he said, well, I, I, I know you're close. And, you're, and I said, just a minute. I went outside. I finally raised my head. I'd been looking only at the clothes and what I was doing. And I looked up and, oh, <laughs> yeah, there's smoke over there. <laughs> and then you did the play-by-play -play for us. All oh, this smoke suddenly. I realized it's just on the next ridge over. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Oh, God. Something different for it, you. It really was. It really... I'm going to show you some photos now. We had some fun searching the internet and found some things that we're going to ask you to respond to. What are these elephants from? Oh, that's from... Uh... This isn't from Harper Valley PTA. Yes, it is. It is? Yeah. But that's the film. That was the film, which was, uh, it was an independent film. You were with elephants, you were with lions, you were never afraid of animals. I love elephants. I love elephants. I don't know what's on your head here, but what's this? Oh, that's, I am a nurse. And that's uh, Bob Hope. But they, what was this from? That was the opening of the uh, Madison Square Garden. You mean when Madison Square Garden opened mm -hmm. originally? No, the second one, oh. I think. Wow. The second one. Now there's the third one, I know. But. So how does this happen? Bob Hope says, would you put on a nurse's uniform and help us out? <laughs> no, this is special. He said they, was, yeah, they talked to the powers that be, my agents and things, and uh, it was a job. Now we're going to the world of color. Explain yourself kissing Elton John. Oh, well, that's Vienna. That's recently. That's pretty recently. It, it isn't the kiss I should explain. It should explain the costume. It and was, it still fits. It was a moment. It was a, yeah, it was a lovely. I looked at the picture and just figured it was 30 years ago. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, it was. And it was for a very good cause. Playboy at one point offered you a million dollars to grace the pages of the magazine. I said no. No. <laughs> I said no. Yeah. My acting coach used to always tell me, Barbara, you're too proper. You have to let people know who you are and what you are. You have to be naked in front of the audience. Naked, not literally. <laughs> Metaphorically, <laughs> yes, okay. but not literally. <laughs> up next, Barbara opens up about heartache in her life. I am so lucky. What's the matter with me? Why? Why am I so sad? In 1958, Barbara met actor Michael Ansara while he was filming his hit TV show, Broken Arrow. The two were married later that year, with Ansara even guesting on I Dream of Jeannie. I am the blue gin. You mean there's more than one of you? Let's talk about Michael now, because well, I remember reading your autobiography and it just sounded like a love story for the ages. It had a sad ending at one point because you didn't stay together. He was, uh, at that time, the love of my life, yes. And we had a very, very good marriage. 
Uh, I'll tell you what happened. After Matthew was born, of course, like mm, four years later, uh, we decided to have another baby. And I was pregnant. And But I went on the road with, of all things, the sound of music mm. <laughs> playing a novitiate, and I'm pregnant. <laughs> Uh, that So I was gone for a couple of months. And I came home, and I went to see my doctor, and he said he, he had bad news for me. And he said, uh, I can't hear a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the baby's gone. And I, and I was seven months pregnant. And at that time, now they would take the baby if they knew that. At the time, they didn't. So I carried that child, uh, knowing it was not going to survive, or hadn't survived. And that really, afterwards, I thought, oh, I'm fine, I'm okay, I'm just fine. And I went back to work, and I went, I remember it was the MGM Grand, I went there and, and uh, sang. But uh, coming home, I just wanted to get home. I just wanted to get home. And once I was there, I didn't want to leave the house. It, it, was, it was the most horrible feeling I have ever had in my life. And I understand now, I, I read that a lot of people don't believe women when they have this terrible depression after a birth or but a stillbirth is just annihilating. Mm -hmm. I, I remember uh, I had a, a cold, so Mike took, us, took me to our main doctor, and the doctor said, hold your hand out, Barbara. And I held it out, and it was going, literally, that, I can't even do it. It was quivering. And he went out and told Mike, he said, she can't, she can't go back to work, because I was supposed to do another play in Arizona. So I went home and I would sit there and I would, I would look at Matthew, who was about three or four years old at the time. I was thinking, I am so lucky. What's the matter with me? Why? Why am I so sad? Why am I so icky? Icky feeling is what I felt. That's really what happened to my marriage. Oh. And it affects your life afterwards because you're, you're angry. You, you know, depressed, can't get happy, and uh, no, I never want to go there again. But I do, uh, in, in reading your book, I remember thinking there was a, an arc, basically, that no matter what happened with you and Michael, there was always love, and I thought that was nice. We're not going to talk about husband number okay. two, because, no. But, <laughs> no <we don't. laughs> but husband number three oh, is gold, oh, right? he's gold. He, he's a, he's... A love, yes, he is. He's Kansas boy. <laughs> I need to take you to a serious spot one more time because there was a time, and this is what I want you to help other people. There was a time that you said once for 14 years you worried that the phone was going to ring about your son, and one day it rang, and you have gotten through a tough period, another one in your life. We're talking about his drug problem, yes. Uh, it's what I didn't know, or Michael and I didn't know how to handle it. Matthew had hidden it so well, but most of us don't have drugs in the family, so you don't know those signs. Now I know what they are. And, and the other thing I think parents need to know is that you should join groups of people who have the same problem. I, I had a dear friend, I thank God, who, who would go, because she had lost a son through drugs. And she would take me to meetings. We go all over the city to meetings. And you learn, you learn from other people what to do, how to handle it. Yeah. You know, you, once they're adults, there's, <laughs> there's not a lot you can do. I think it's very important for people to talk about it. It's very important. 
and uh, and in, in Matthew's good days, he was just the most wonderful. His friends called him the gentle giant. He's a big guy like his dad, and uh, smart and funny. And I was lucky to have him as long as I did. Coming up. Once upon a time, you said these words. I intend to be working until I'm 90. <laughs> now what? Plus, I'm a Swifty. <laughs> you know, I am. <laughs> and right now, I think she can do anything. Have you taken a selfie with a celebrity? We want to see it. Scan this QR code and share it with us. We'll post our favorites on the On the Red Carpet social pages. Where is the genie bottle? Uh, as of a year ago, it's at the Smithsonian. Yes. But you have one in your house too, right? No, I gave it to Oh, that was the one that yeah. I saw in your house once upon a time? Yeah. Yeah, that was the real deal. Wow. Once upon a time, you said these words. I intend to be working until I'm 90. <laughs> now what? Well, 92 is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, yeah, still working. Well, I'm, right now I, I have a commercial that's out. And, and I'm going to uh, uh, Mallorca to do something for uh, a company there, <clears throat> which is kind of fun. I'm looking forward to that. I have no idea what they're going to do with me. And the last question is, we're putting it out there. Taylor Swift for the Genie reboot? <laughs> I'm a Swifty. <laughs> you know, I am. <laughs> and right now, I think she can do anything. <laughs> Oh, she's a cutie, yeah. What a great answer. 